Hey everybody, Sean Holsinger here from HolsingersFlyShop.com Bringing you another video, this is the last of this month's streamer theme and uh, I really enjoyed tying the streamers, it was a lot of fun, I'm still going to mix them in every now and then because I like to tie streamers but uh, this one was a cool one that worked for me this summer it's a pattern I saw Lance Egan tie for Fly Fish Foods and uh, I decided to try it for myself this summer for smallmouth. I thought, man, that's got to be a killer smallmouth pattern, and it worked real well for me. Um, you can see here I got a couple pictures of different ones that I tied in different colors. This purple one right here that I'm showing you right now worked real well for me. Uh, I like that. I had, a, I had a fair amount of fish on that one. And uh, the olives and the browns work too because they're natural colors for the fish in the stream. And uh, don't be afraid to try this for for trout too. This is a great trout pattern if you like to swing streamers. It's a smaller one, but yet it's a pretty meaty one. So it's a good one, you know, for slow, cold winter fishing and stuff like that. Give this one a try. It'll work for you. Anyhow, guys, here it is in the vise and uh, the material list to tie it. So have fun, and I hope you enjoy tying this one. All right, here we see the fly in the vise. Really cool looking fly, and I had a lot of fun with it this summer. And uh, this is how it's going to ride in the water. I'll show you that right now. So when I tie this, I'm going to tie this with the light side down, just like a natural fish. You know, the light side is on the belly, dark side is on the back. So that's the way we're going to tie it. But when it's in the vise, we're going to tie it what it looks like upside down. So let's get into tying it here for a hook. I'm using an 839 fire hole size 8 and uh, I really like this hook it's a nice hook a nice heavy hook which is good I like that and we're for thread I'm using 140 denier brown okay then I'm just gonna use some uh, dumbbell eyes I'm gonna come up right about an eye length good healthy eye length behind the eye tie them in and uh, I'm just gonna tie them in there best I can get them good and tight and centered I'll make a couple wraps around and just all different direction figure aiding it just getting it in there as good as I can if you want you can use a little bit of super glue but till I get everything tied on here it's gonna be pretty good and tight so we're going to bring our thread back to where the barb would be and uh, like I said now when we tie this the first thing I'm going to tie on is the brown and I'm just going to use some brown marabou and I want to keep this kind of sparse okay because I'm going to put in two colors on here so it's going to double up the size so we're going to put that on I want it to be just about the same length as the hook shank so I'm just going to tie that down Alright, I'll go a little bit around the bend by doing that. It helps foul up less whenever you're casting. and helps stop it from going around the inside your hook like that. So I'll go around the bend just a hair. And now I'm going to put my pearl gray piece of marabou on. And again, I got this thinned down pretty good. And we're just going to set that on the same length and we'll tie this down okay and there we go now we're going to trim this off now next thing I want to add just a little bit of flash out the back of this and for that I'm going to use some Pearl Flashaboo, just any, whatever you got here, that's not a big deal, just something to brighten it up, just a hair. Going to use, I don't know, three or four, whatever I grabbed there, just a couple pieces, looks like about four. And I'm going to put this on the one side and I'm going to try to get it to come out where that brown and gray meet. Get a couple wraps on there. 
and then I'm just going to twist these around the other side and tie it all down back to that marabou there okay now I'm just going to take all this flash and I'm going to trim it off to about the length of the marabou and it doesn't hurt at all if you alternate the length a little bit it makes it a little bit more lifelike if you if it's all trimmed off flat it doesn't always look real well next thing we're going to put on is some chenille fly fish food small stone fly chenille the color is brown sea or seal brown and coffee all right we're just going to tie this on on the hook wrap it back there to the marabou next thing we're going to add this is just a brown hen hackle here this is a 4B bird from whiting, but whatever, you know, whatever brown hackle to match the, the brown uh, chenille here. Oops, I got wrapped up here. Okay, now for this, I'm just going to take my feather, I'm going to pinch the end and pull that tip out and separate the tip from the rest of it, and we're going to tie that tip down. Tie it right back to the marabou again, and then bring my thread up here to the eye. Now we'll put our marabou, or sorry, our chenille. I'm just going to wrap that side by side, not making this too big. Wrap it right up here to the eyes. Two or three wraps, tie it off. Now we're going to wrap our hackle up, and as I wrap, I'm going to pull these fibers backwards. And like a woolly bugger is how we're going to tie this. We're going to separate our, our wrap so I don't want them touching. I want to spread them out a little bit and palmer this right up that chenille. Just like a woolly bugger. So far we've pretty much tied a woolly bugger. Alright, get this tied down. And the last thing we're going to do, what really makes it the streamer, is we're going to put a head on it. For the head is a we're gonna do a dubbing loop okay there we go you see that's nice and buggy looking now we're gonna put our head on it the head for the dubbing loop we're using some gold brown or sorry near enough sculpin gold brown from Dave Whitlock's pattern blends this is really nice stuff what it is it's a mixture of squirrel and a lot of flash you can see it here in the video there's a lot of flash, but there's a lot of bugginess because of the squirrel and a little bit of antron too mixed in there. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take and pull out little pieces and separate it. And I want to make a dubbing loop. So I'm going to make a nice long strip of it, about two or three inches wide. I'm going to lay it down on my table here to get it, to get it the way I want it so it's a little easier to work with. And then I want to add a little bit extra flash because I like the flash. And to do that, I'm going to use a little bit of Hair's Ear SLF Prism. And I don't need much, but I'm going to lay that down on top of my material that I just separated and laid out. Okay, now to make the dubbing loop, I'm going to take my thread. I'm going to put my finger in the middle of the thread, loop it over to make a big loop. Okay, we're going to make about two or three wraps around the hook. And then once around the thread, by making that wrap around the thread, it will tighten this up down here at the bottom. Okay, now I'm going to pick my piece of dubbing up, which like I said, is about two inches long here now. And I'm going to put it in the middle of my thread, in the middle of that loop. And I'm going to pinch it down with my back fingers. So I am using three fingers to do this right now. And then I'm going to separate this out and I'm going to take my dubbing twister and I'm going to put my dubbing twister in the loop behind my two fingers pinching it together and pop it out. So there you can see I made a nice little dubbing loop with my thread in it. I'm just going to get, sorry, all the dubbing centered in there. Now I'm going to put my finger behind the dubbing and I'm going to start twisting on my dubbing twister. 
once I get a pretty good twist to it, I'm going to let go and it's going to make a nice dubbing brush. You see the dubbing brush there? And I'm just going to give it a couple extra twists, make sure it's good and tight. And then I'm going to pull a little bit out. And then we're going to start wrapping this on. And what I want to do is I want to make sure I get this dumb, these dumbbell eyes covered. So I'm just going to make sure I get on top and bottom of the dumbbell eyes. And like a figure eight motion there and then in front of it and then I'm going to tie it off and then we're going to clean this up here in a second but we're just going to get this tied off good Oops. Gonna cut that out of there and then we're just going to whip finish right here behind the eye Now I made a nice big buggy dubbing loop on here and that's going to allow me to brush this out and make a nice wooly head on it. So we'll trim this and then we're just going to take my brush, brush that out a little bit and you can see how nice and buggy that looks. And uh, this thing worked great for me for smallmouth. So give it a try you're gonna like it okay you saw that wasn't hard to tie I hammered that out in a couple minutes could have done it a lot faster if I wasn't talking through it and explaining stuff um, you know I've, I've tied a f quite a few of them so but I could probably tie this one in five minutes and that's a great great tie for a smallmouth you know smallmouth fly that you can tie in five minutes is pretty good anyhow like I said earlier in the video at the beginning mix up your colors on it. Have a little fun with the colors. If you know what colors you like to fish for smallmouth and stuff like that, you know, mix up your colors and experiment. That's half the fun of fly tying is experimenting. And um, all the materials you need to tie for this fly you can find in the shop at wholesingersflyshop.com and also we have the links down in the bottom of the web page here. Or, uh, sorry, the bottom of the description of the YouTube channel. Um, so please go ahead and just scroll down, click on that if you need the materials to tie it. That's an easy way to get there. And uh, I'll have these for sale on our website here soon too. So thanks for watching everybody. Like I always say, I enjoy, I love doing this or I wouldn't be doing it. I love bringing you guys these videos and I love your comments. You know, it's been a lot of fun here. I've been asking you guys for comments. You've been responding to me and I'm trying to keep up with all of them. So uh, thanks for doing that and uh, it, you know it's it just adds a lot of extra fun and helps me know that people are watching and care to watch so thank you for watching and until next week when we start something new uh, I'm Sean Holsinger and from HolsingerSlyShop.com